The Hardwick Scientific PDC-001 Expanded Plasma Cleaner. It has four times the capacity of the basic plasma cleaner. This compact tabletop unit with adjustable RF power settings has a maximum RF output of 30 watts. It includes a Pyrex chamber that is six inches in diameter by six and a half inches long. It has an active fan for cooling, an integral switch for the vacuum pump. This particular unit does not come with the vacuum pump. It is powered by 110 volts and draws 1.8 amps. First, let's take a look at the connections in the back. It's uh, very basic. This is our input power. Again, uh, 110 volts. Uh, AC. This is where you would connect your vacuum pump and take care because this is actually the neck of the Pyrex uh, bell inside the chamber. So it is glass, it's very sturdy, but just remember there's always a piece of glass uh, sticking out about two inches. Um, your vacuum pump can be powered by the unit itself from this receptacle right here. Uh, also be aware that it has a seven amp rating uh, which is more than enough to accommodate most pumps that you'd need uh, for your process. This is the Pyrex chamber. Uh, be aware that periodically you should clean this O-ring surface, uh, especially if this has been doing a lot of etching or cleaning and there's residue in there, it can get on the surface and affect your vacuum. Now, um, these are your two connections. This is a three-way valve. What this valve allows you to do is not only pump down the chamber, but also introduce the process gas. And when you're done with your processing, you can vent the chamber through this port here. So typically, you would connect your process gas on the left side and your vent on the right side. The manual is exceptional. It not only gives very good descriptions, but it also gives you plenty of uh, pictorials in here that explain exactly how these valves work. Uh, we've set them up to work the same way and they're very easy to operate. For example, if you want to process with room air, which is what we're going to do now, it shows you that this side would be where your metering valve is that would uh, introduce your process gas. This would be your vent and directly vertical would pump just the chamber. Uh, let's start with one thing. When you select your vacuum pump, <clears throat> it should be able to at least achieve 200 millitor. Uh, this is because processing with different gases, whether it be argon, oxygen, or whatever, uh, can be done in ranges from 300 to 1500 millitor. So it's good to have uh, the pump that at least can achieve 200 millitor. Now what we're going to do now, in our little simulation here, is before you can connect your process gas directly to the chamber, um, you have to supply, this is supplied by the customer, uh, with a special needle valve. Uh, these are easily obtained. And what this needle valve does is it allows you to throttle in um, the amount of gas that you think you're gonna need. We'll just tighten this up here. The chamber will seal itself. It aligns perfectly with these pins here. And once you start it,
make sure your vent valve is off and your valve is in a vertical position and the chamber will begin to pump down Okay, we have a really strong pump on here. We're already down to uh, 86 millitor. <clears throat> now, once you're setting up your process, you will have some experimentation that you'll have to use uh, regarding your, um, what they call your metering valve. Uh, I've got this set for around 300. So now that we're down to our, what I would call our base vacuum, we're going to turn our valve to the left on our three-way valve and as you can see we are now introducing uh, what's actually a leak, a calibrated leak but we are introducing your process gas into the chamber. Um, once that has been done we can then turn on our RF power supply and after a minute There we go. Now if you look directly into the chamber, uh, since we're just using air, you'll see more of a purplish pink glow. Argon, you normally know, get a nice dark glow of purple with that. But um, here we'll step up in power to medium and high. We can vary this. There we go. By introducing more or less of our process gas. Uh, I find that this seems to work very well between a low of 300 and a high of um, 1,000 millitor, uh, which is actually one tor. And when your process is complete, you can, you can actually leave this preset so you could turn off your RF supply, that would turn it back on and you can then turn off your pump. You can then turn your valve back all the way to the right side, which would then vent the chamber. And we're just about back up to 760 Tor, which is atmosphere and then you can open your chamber. We'll close our vent valve back to the chamber and repump our chamber. Okay, we're back down to a process level. We'll once again open our process valve to the, to the left, to our process gas. I like to start low here. Turn on our RF power. And once again, we've established our our plasma and this completes this demonstration